Hi, I'm Mr. Castro at Milt Middle School, and you're watching West Virginia History in two minutes or less. Today we're going to be talking about Lord Dunmore's War. Here we go. In 1768, the Iroquois and British had signed the treaties of Fort Stanwix and hard labor, but the other tribes such as the Shawnee, Seneca, Cayuga, and Delaware did not agree. On April 30th in present-day Hancock County, Daniel Greathouse and some of his men were looking to ambush some of the Mingo. They were drinking at Baker's Tavern when they killed nine of them, including a brother and sister of Chief Logan. Chief Logan had kept peaceful relations with the colonists, but when he heard of the killing, he vowed revenge, and that summer he killed between 13 and 30 Western Virginians. In addition, Delaware Chief Bald Eagle and Shawnee Chief Silver Hills were also killed. Ohio natives had declared open warfare. Lord Dunmore, also known as Virginia Governor John Murray, decided it was time to destroy the power of the Indians once and for all. He organized two armies of approximately 1,000 each. Some Virginians questioned the timing of this war because the colonists were very angry towards Great Britain. It had reached a boiling point and they believed it to be a distraction from the coming revolution. The plan was for Dunmore to lead the Northern Army and Colonel Lewis to lead the Southern Army. The plan was to meet up at the mouth of the Hawking River and attack Shawnee villages. But that plan would soon fall apart. Lewis left from Camp Union in present-day Lewisburg, named for him, and traveled down the Kanawha to Point Pleasant. The Shawnee, led by Chief Cornstalk, had been following their movements. Cornstalk wanted to attack the Southern Army before they met up with Dunmore's Northern Army. Two men from Lewis's camp, James Robinson and Valentine Sevier, went out for the early morning to do a little hunting and spotted Cornstalk's forces moving in. They ran back to alert the camp. Musket fire combined with the early morning fog along the river made the fighting even bloodier. Cornstalk's forces were winning, but Lieutenant Shelby's flanking movement was mistaken by Cornstalk as reinforcements. Cornstalk signaled retreat, and two days later he sent a message to Lord Dunmore at Fort Gower asking for peace. Colonel Lewis stayed at Point Pleasant burying the dead and had his men start building what would become Fort Randolph. It's unknown how many Shawnee died because they removed some of the bodies. The Treaty of Camp Chart was signed by Lord Dunmore, the Shawnee, Delaware, and Mingo and allowed colonists to focus their attention on the coming revolution. If you'd like more info on this, you can check out wvstateparks.com because today in Point Pleasant you can visit 2ND Wee State Park. There you will find some monuments as well as statues and even some paintings on the flood wall depicting what happened in this war.